Hello everyone, we have some absolutely beautiful weather here today, all week actually. So I've been doing some testing of Betaflight GPS Rescue using this quad here. And I was intending to do this ages ago, basically at the time that I built this quad I was uh, going to do a bit, bunch of GPS rescue testing with this. But at the time, uh, this was a few years ago now, and it wasn't really up to scratch, or at least the impression I got from watching other YouTube videos is that it wasn't really that great. So I ended up not bothering, but in the time since then it has improved quite a lot. So I thought I'd give it a try, and this is the plywood and fiberglass 250 size quad that I made a while ago. Well, a few years ago, obviously. And I just put a little piece of aluminium on the back there with a BN220 GPS and set that up with Betaflight 4.5.2, I believe. And I've already done the testing, so I know how it works, and it worked beautifully. First pop, it, everything just worked beautifully the first time. One slight issue is that on the OSD, the home arrow is pointing backwards. It's like almost, uh, it's like 180 degrees reversed. But as long as you are aware of that and you don't let it bother you, everything just worked beautifully. So I thought I'd make a little video to show you a little bit of that. Not much of a video, but I um, haven't uploaded a video for a while, so... Let's make one outside instead of inside for a change. Okay, I've already tested this once, but I'll I'll do it again on camera. I could have pretended that there was the first time, but you know, it's not. Let's see if we've got some satellites. Okay, looks like we're okay for satellites. And um, okay, so just fly fly in a straight line over here. But and what I've noticed is that the home arrow is pointing in the exact wrong direction. See how it's pointing forwards when the home home point is directly behind me. But that doesn't seem to matter. What that tells me I've noticed is that it's actually correctly adjusted now. <laughs> now that now I'm going directly towards home, but the home arrow is pointing behind me. So as long as you just don't worry about that, or maybe you could just reverse it 180 degrees in your mind. Actually no it's Oh anyway, it doesn't matter. So anyway, let's go over here a little bit. I'll just put it into angle mode so I can swap my goggles to my hat again. Alright, now we're flying line of sight. Let's come down. Alright, so flying in angle mode, that's fine. Just pretend I was flying along normally in FPV. And right about here I'll hit the rescue switch. It goes up what looks like about 40 to 50 meters, it's quite a long way up, <laughs> but then it turns exactly back towards me and it's going to land pretty close to where it took off, I hope, Ooh, it's a bit, it's come down quite quickly, but the, the home point is that fence post there, so let's see where it, where it lands. This is all just, there we go. All right, so I'll disarm there. All right, so the fence post was there. A couple of times I tried this, it landed right here. And another time I wasn't quite watching because I had the goggles on, but I think it was pretty close. Um, because I had a problem with this. Uh, unfortunately, when you turn these FlySky radios off and then on again, which is what I was doing to check the, the actual like radio signal loss, when you turn it on, if one of these switches is down, if that switch is down, which is the arm switch, the radio ignores all of your inputs and it doesn't do anything, it doesn't even send any signal to the receiver until you've put all these switches up. And unfortunately for my case, I, I tried that and my switches all being up means that the quad just disarms and it fell out of the sky. So not sure where exactly the second time it came down, but I heard it hit this, this gate which was closed at the time, so it was probably somewhere along that line pretty close. So. So this distance here looks like about maybe 10 meters. That's actually the worst I've seen so far. So it's pretty good on the landing location. Quite happy with that. And are we good to go? All right, I think we're good to go. So I don't have a full battery left, so I'll just fly this one around a little bit. And then um, I'll start recording again with the full battery. I want to see how far over there I can get. And what I noticed is that um, the way I have it set up is that when the receiver loses signal from the radio, it 
automatically switches one of these switches it's as if the radio it's as if I had done that but then as soon as it gets signal back again it's as if I had done that so what happens is and I can see on my OSD that it's gone into rescue mode so typically what happens is it goes into rescue mode and then it pops up a bit and then I get signal back and so it only interrupts my flying for maybe a few seconds at a time which is great but it's also a great way to let me know where I'm safe it's just nudging me to say, hey, this isn't going to work, this isn't going to work. So I'm gradually building up a picture as I fly around over there of where I can be safe and where I'm not. Okay. Not sure if you need to let it build up a picture of the home again after each arming. I think you do, because each time you disarm, it resets the home position, right? But it's so liberating to have that feature so I've never actually I've lived here all this all these years I've never actually flown a mini quad as far away as I am now which is kind of a bummer because when I moved here like I had visions in my mind of doing this all the time but the GPS rescue for beta flight wasn't really up to scratch and flying FPV with Ardu pilot was an acro even acro mode and Ardu pilot's not not really as responsive as beta flight is it so I had never actually done this before um, one thing you have to keep in mind is that you can't you can't get into a situation where you have about more than about one or two seconds in front of you that you're going to hit something so you can't go into super tight gaps well you could risk it <laughs> you shouldn't really and the other thing I need to keep an eye on is the battery level I suppose because if I'm too far away and I suddenly need to come back well, that could be a bit of a bummer okay so we lost lost signal there but then I gained it lost it again oops lift up my radio there we go we got back again um, all right that's good I think maybe the next time it loses signal I'll just let it fly back and see I want to see the um, speed that it flies back at just to check that I think I set it at 36 kilometers an hour if I go down here by these trees we should lose signal down here somewhere I think there we go okay so I'm just gonna oh it goes back into air mode doesn't it so <laughs> uh, yeah but the reason I knew I was gonna lose signal head down here is because I did before actually might be okay here you just have to keep an eye on the, the little display at the bottom of the OSD which is telling me whether I'm in rescue or air mode and each time it like that each time it goes back into air mode I have to push the nose down a little bit to keep the, my forward speed because the GPS rescue mode will cause the quad to level out but anyway we've got Alright, so we'll lose signal down right about here. No? Gotta be gotta be losing signal somewhere here. There we go. Okay, so I'll just put it into I flip the switch into rescue mode so it's gonna stay in rescue mode. And I just want to make sure that it's gonna bring it all the way back here and at what speed? 36 kilometers an hour is the target. It's doing 35. That's pretty good. Man, this is great. The altitude is quite high. I wonder why it's. I wonder why it's so high. It's supposed to be only 10 meters above the highest point that I flew at. All right, so I just put back into air mode here. Keep flying a bit. Alright, so I didn't go very far out in the field that time because the battery whoop, battery wasn't um, exactly full. But we'll go out a little bit further in the next battery. Just finish this one off with some gentle flying around here. 
You see, right about here, I'm safe because I'm close to home, but if you lose signal while you're heading straight at a tree like this, that might be bad because it's going to take a couple of seconds for the GPS rescue to lift you up far, far enough to clear the tree. So for that reason, you don't want to let your momentum or your position two seconds in the future to get too, uh, too close to anything. Okay, looks like we've we've done this battery now, so come back. All right, we've got 12 satellites and a full battery. So this time, let's go. Just go out as far as as far as we can go. I can see way off in the distance. There's a group of bulls over there. So I might see if I can get as far as that. We'll see. Seems like comfortable cruising speed's about 55 to 60 with this quad. And I have a 200 milliwatt VTX, which should get me out that far. I have a patch on my goggles. So. Shouldn't be too bad. And so this is 700 meters out. Nice view in this VTX. Well, we're already at the bulls, so here they are. All right, well, that was easy. Let's see if we can go a little bit further. Oh boy. <laughs> Definitely wouldn't be doing this without GPS rescue. All right, that's one kilometer. Might just do a little turny turn here to make sure we've got decent signal. Looks like it. Video's good, radio's good. Oh, maybe this is the bulls I was looking at. Yeah, this is the ones. So this is still within line of, oh, they're goats? Judging from the way they're running around, I think they're goats. Uh, yeah, they must be. Oh, look, they've got like a little track that they walk on or something. Video's good, radio's good. Oh, this is great. Woohoo! This is what I wanted to do. Can we go down here? Oops, rescue mode. All right. <laughs> Lucky I didn't hit that tree, actually. Oh. Completely lost video and radio there. Kind of lost track of where my, um, yeah, we're out of line of sight somehow. How did I do that? I think we need to go back this way to get back in line of sight. Hopefully this is okay. I really like skimming over the top of the trees like this. I can actually hear the quad still, so... Oh, that's this group here, right. Wow. You know, it's funny, now that I have this, it's actually more of a problem to lose video than it is to lose radio control, because... Oh, I see. So straight ahead is home. Yeah. Um, because if it loses video but not radio control, then I'm still in air mode. <laughs> oh, I can hear the quad from like 600 meters away. Let's just play in these trees here. Should be safe. Trouble is, without digital video, these trees can be a little bit tricky to um, see properly with 
just with analog. Oh, some more goats here. And some turkeys by the looks of it. Get in the trees. Haha. <laughs> In the trees with you. <laughs> oh, the whole bunch of them, shit. See if I can make them all go in the trees. They really don't like these quads. Come on. Get in there. Ha <laughs> Kind of did, I think. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> out of sight, out of mind. They won't distract me anymore. Wow. See, this treetop surfing is great fun. In my opinion. Do you like it? I like it. It always felt so risky to be doing this until today. This is the first time I'm actually feeling kind of comfortable. It would be nice to have a little bit more visual um, clarity in the picture though. That's the main problem now. Also, getting a little bit low on battery so I better get back. Yep, oh shit. Let's go back. So now, to go home, I need to make it so that the home arrow is facing directly backwards. Ooh, 14.0. Alright, well that was fun. Everything, everything back in one piece, nice.